culture seems like something that you know you you really stress and you know how do you how do you build a culture how do you maintain a culture how do you ensure that that culture extends throughout employees as you as you bring on and, and scale the organizations and how does that culture you know get started and then also how do you maintain that culture over time I'd like to say that that, that, that really the, what the CEO should do is create the climate where people can be successful sure so it's more climate setting than it is managing the culture if you try to manage the culture you're manipulating if you try to create a climate where people can grow and, and feel good about themselves, then, then that's something that's within the, the, the realm and the control of the CEO to do. Sure. So that's where we spend our time. I spent my time, the latter part of my career with IMES was almost 100% uh, on, on, on leading, the, leading the business, leading the culture. And let the operating people spend their time making the business happen on a day-to-day -day basis. My job was to keep the strategic plan alive and keep the culture alive in the business. And I think that's the, uh, I think that is the ultimate responsibility of, of every CEO. And, and by the way, I think that it will help uh, as you scale up, uh, the, spending that time in that culture and, and, and providing those parameters uh, will allow you to grow a lot faster. Sure. Because you're going to be able to recruit the kind of people that are going to help you, help you grow in the way you want to grow. How did you communicate the culture and the core values in a way that the employees really believed in it? Because one of the things I've noticed is when we have talked about it, which has been very limited, that employee, it's hard for employees to really buy into it. Well, they don't buy in until they see that you're doing what you say you're going to do. You have to walk the talk. Mm -hmm. You have to be consistent. We would do a survey with our employees Mm -hmm. asking them to grade us on how we're doing vis-a-vis -vis our stated beliefs. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we weren't upholding one of those beliefs, we, or at least we weren't, their perception we weren't upholding it, mm -hmm. we would hear from them. And then we would report back to them, again, we heard what you said, mm -hmm. and here's what we've done. Mm -hmm. uh, and once you go through two or three cycles like that, two or three years of that, and people start to believe that mm -hmm. you're, you're really you're really credible. You're mm -hmm. really you're really walking the talk. Mm -hmm. and then they buy in. Mm -hmm. What's like like a particularly poignant or painful maybe example of that where maybe they they said, "Hey, you're not doing this thing that you said you're going to do in the core values." Well, I'll give you an example. One we we said we believed in quality. Mm -hmm. When we started looking at what we did after we found that we were manufacturing product that wasn't in spec, in spec, what would we do with the product? Well, what we did with the product is we, <clears throat> we would test, we would test uh, each pallet and we would send out the, we would send out the, the, the product mm -hmm. and we basically would ship the product. Mm -hmm. So we, what, we, what we needed to do is the first time that it started going out of control, until we got it back into control, we should have held all of that product, mm -hmm. and we should have re we should have recycled it. Mm -hmm. Well, it really came down to you don't believe in quality, you believe in production. Mm -hmm. So we, that day mm -hmm. we changed. We said mm -hmm. no, we're going to change our procedure. We're going to we're going to absolutely support quality mm -hmm. in every aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to. We're going to demonstrate it by what we do, not what we say. Mm -hmm. and, and it didn't take long for the employees in the plant. As soon as you throw away four tons of product or you have to recycle a, a, a half a truckload of product, mm -hmm. it doesn't take the employees very long to, to understand and realize that you mean business. We've been interviewing people and we've interviewed, I don't know, dozens, hundreds of people for positions and we, we hire very, very selectively. But fit is one of the hardest things to screen for because you only have however much interview time and yep. um, so how do you do that do you do you just go from gut and then you might have to correct that mistake later or, or how does that work well you know I was fortunate I had the Mary test right my wife was uh, was uh, a good judge of character and she did an outstanding job in the early days and she'd meet somebody and uh, uh, but later on we developed some psychological tests mm -hmm that were very helpful and be, for us to be, be able to kind of see through the person a little bit more to see what's behind everything. And uh, those, worked, those worked quite well. 
I think too what I've seen is um, maybe changing your focus of the interviews to be the culture-based fit. So you know right. based on a resume, in general if they have the experience, so the first screening or the first round is really about the, maybe the more the technical fit. Mm -hmm. And then how do you have multiple people actually bring them in for the second round or whatever. Right. And their only focus is to figure out if these people fit in the culture or not through, you know, there's all sorts of behavior-based mm -hmm. question techniques or strength finders or different ways to kind of pull in you know, the more you know about your team today and what works, the more you can clarify those and then say, this is what you're looking for.